So previously on the channel we covered every achievement in Fallout 3, well it's time to keep that train rolling as it's time for the next go. And folks I'm so excited because today's game is one of my favourites of all time, as it is finally time to cover... But we're in for a lot folks as we have to complete the main campaign four times for four different storylines, kill an unthinkable amount of monsters, creatures and people, and then cover several side mission and miscellaneous achievements, so let's waste absolutely no time and get straight into it. Welcome to the Achievement Grind. The game begins with us in a slight predicament. We are a courier of the Mojave Wasteland, however our latest delivery was interrupted by a stranger, a sharply dressed wisecracking thief played by the recently departed Matthew Perry. Rest in peace bud, god that one hurt a bit. However he slides some sort of coin into his pocket and introduces us to the theme of the game. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Jesus Christ, well, I guess Benny isn't as good as killing as I thought he'd be. But alas, we are not dead. It turns out that we survived the shooting because somebody dug us out of this place and then took us to the local doctor. So this is where we officially start our journey. And folks, YouTube always say that it's a great idea to remind you lovely lot to like, comment and subscribe. So if you would please, that would be, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. With Doc Mitchell, the usual Fallout intro starts. We name and create our hero, pick our stats and make sure that we also select the Wild Wasteland perk as well, because it is a legal requirement for a new Vegas run. The last thing that we do before leaving is receive our Pip-Boy and make sure that we select Hardcore mode for our first run, as once we get that achievement out of the way with we can continue on normal. Before we leave the house and start the game proper, we also unlock our first achievement, ain't that a kick in the head? Now there is a lot to do in Fallout New Vegas, however for our very first task I wanted to get a really grindy couple of achievements out of the way with, and that requires us to become a master at an in-game called Caravan. Now I'm not going to say that I'm a pro at Caravan, not at all. Your goal is to get your three piles of cards to add up to 26 first, I think. I just googled a guide and used a bit of cheese where you remove most of the cards except for those that easily add up to 26. So with our new friend Ringo we started to win game after game. The first achievements were for winning three hands in total which unlocked us know when to fold them and all we have to do now is win 30 in total. Easy enough but quite grindy, so roughly an hour later we won our final match unlocking Caravan Master. The main task for us right Right now though is to track down this Benny and take back the coin that he stole from us, so let's begin. We stay around Good Springs a little while longer completing missions and getting the tutorials out of the way, also collecting our very first vintage snow globe. Like the last game there's an achievement for collecting every single one of them, however unlike Fallout 3 there are only like 7 or 8 to collect, and they're all pretty easy to grab, so this is something that we'll be doing throughout. Exploring for the first time we come across Prim, and help the local sheriff department with a pickle that helps steer us in the right direction. The next stop was Nipton where we met an extremely fortunate fellow who had just won the lottery. Yeah! Who won the lottery? I did! Smell that air! Couldn't you just drink it like booze? Before arriving in Novak to hopefully continue the trail. Now Novak is important for two reasons. Firstly, it steers you in the right direction again. However, buried in the mouth of this giant dinosaur is Boone the Sniper. And Boone has a quest for us. His wife was recently sold into slavery and Boone wants us to find out who is responsible and bring them to him. So we do that first. Now spoiler alert, I already know who did it. The manager of the nearby hotel, as in her private safe we find the bill of sale. With that we steer the culprit to the front of the dino and watch in awe as her head just vanishes. The quest is complete and our reward is Boone becoming a companion, and he is the very first that we need. From this we also unlock one of the best sidekicks in the game as well as the next achievement, Old Buddy Old Pal. There's also another achievement for teaming up with every possible companion in the game, so that's the first person ticked off and completed. From this we now know that Benny has travelled to New Vegas, so heading there is our next priority. The journey is littered with fights and enemies, however we get there in one piece and finally take the glorious sight in, that is New Vegas. The next mission that we accept though has an achievement. In the outskirts of the New Vegas Strip are the Kings, a faction devoted to a certain famous singer, and we must now do some tasks for the King in order to gain favour from him. Now the quests aren't anything too difficult, he just wants us to find out some information on a security guard and stop a civil war from tearing New Vegas apart. You know, chill vibes only. But 20 minutes later we complete the quest and unlock GI Blues as well as entry to the main New Vegas Strip. Now just for a little bit of context, in Fallout New 
Vegas, there are four factions that we have to end the game with. Caesar's Legion, the NCR, Mr. House, and Yes Man. And these factions interact with each other throughout the game constantly, so picking your battles is very crucial to playing this. However, for our first playthrough, we are going to join the Legion, as everybody hates them, so it's best to get their faction out of the way with earlier. Firstly, we are invited to the Lucky 38 Casino, where Mr. House resides, and meet him for the first time. He tells us that the item that Benny stole is the Platinum Chip, and House wants us to secure the chip for him as it holds incredible power, which will sway the ties of an upcoming battle. Fortunately, Benny is also in a nearby casino, ready for us to surprise him, so let's head there now. We enter the Tops Casino in which he is hiding and unlock the next achievement, they went that away. Moments after, we find Benny, and as you would imagine, he is quite surprised to see us again. The meeting goes better than expected though, and with some good speech, we convince Benny to talk to us privately. It doesn't go well, however, as he runs away with the chip and we deal with his thugs. Who cares about that though, as now we're in a proper casino. I think it's time to tackle three more achievements, and they are dead easy. We just have to play 10 hands of each game type, blackjack, roulette, and the slots. Easy as anything, honestly. We throw a couple of caps in each and one by one unlock one arm bandit, double down, and little wheel for completing them all. Before we leave the casino, we head to Benny's suite and make another interesting discovery though, with Yes Man, a hack securatron that Benny was using to help him take over Vegas. Now, he isn't here anymore, but we can still introduce ourselves to him and unlock Ring-a-Ding-Ding in the process. And surprise, surprise, after meeting Yes Man for the first time, we also get our character to a lovely level 10 and with that also unlock New Kid. Now, one of the absolute best parts about New Vegas is the sheer amount that you can do within this game, from side missions and miscellaneous stuff, extra games, and oh god, so much to talk about. So, I decided before we carry on with the main quest line, we'd get a couple of side missions and miscellaneous achievements covered first. Our next achievement was dead easy. We just have to use a crafting bench to create 20 items altogether. Now, that may sound a lot, however, if you create 20 bullets, it still counts and is pretty much a free achievement, as when we do just that, we unlock crafty. The next achievement I went for was a brave choice. I decided that it was best for me to go and find and recruit every companion in the game. So a couple of hours later we recruited Veronica, Lily, Eddie, Arcade, Cass and finally Raul, as that's how we unlocked the whole gangs here. Another great hurdle to overcome this soon. Now it's time for more story and importantly to meet Caesar's Legion and find Benny. Caesar immediately invites us to his camp to talk business and when we arrive we see why everybody hates him immediately, as well as another familiar face. Caesar Caesar says that we can do whatever we want to Benny after completing a task for him that will require the Platinum Chip. It turns out that this chip grants House's robot army a massive upgrade that will pretty easily squash anything in their way. Caesar wants me to destroy the base to be able to do so, so we head down to make our decision. Now strangely enough, even though for this playthrough we're going to side with the Legion, for the playthrough we still give the robots the upgrade as Legion still thinks that they've been destroyed, so technically it's a win-win for now. With our part fulfilled, we then take care of Benny in a simple and humbling manner. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit complicated, as I'm going to be doing a bunch of save scumming to replay certain parts of the game without having to do it all again. So, we make a hard save right now and carry on working for the Legion. He has us break into Mr. House's private bedroom and snuff him, destroy a remnant of the Brotherhood of Steel, and deal with a bunch of hungry cannibals that run a nearby casino. And finally, Legion wants us to win favour with a group of loners called the Boomers. Now, this group are obsessed with explosives, as you may piece together from the name. However, the next achievement has us complete quests for them to gain their favour. In Valais, we must prove our loyalty by completing several boring tasks around the base. From listening to children speak to introducing lovers, we must do it all. The final and most important task, however, has us raise an old plane from the lake which the boomers plan to make operational again. We head to the lake with the fancy balloons that we need to make it rise. Funnily enough though, when we raise the aircraft, we accidentally find a new location, and with it being our 50th found in total, we then unlock Walker of the Mojave. Going home to a job well done, we then talk to Mother Pearl, win favour with the Boomers, and unlock Valair. Again, for the next little while, I wanted to get some of the smaller achievements tackled first. The next has us repair 30 total items. Now, a really easy way to do this is to just constantly pick up duplicates for the sake of grinding this. So, constantly doing this throughout the game will eventually unlock you, Jury Rigger. You run bar to town is the next achievement that has us sell 10,000 caps worth of goods to vendors. However, I think the description for this is wrong, for we unlocked it when we bought a load of weapon mods that will need for another achievement later on. We bought 8,000 caps worth of goods and somehow you run Barter Town Unlocked. 
Anyway, the final achievement for now has us find the remaining snow globes that we needed. Now, another mission of the Legion has us kill President Kimball, the leader of the NCR, as he has gone to Hoover Dam to give a big speech to the troops. We have to make sure that that speech isn't finished. However, the final snow globe is in the main building when we arrive at the dam. We throw it into our pockets and thankfully globe trotter unlocks. At this point, the NCR absolutely hate us. However, with a disguise, we can walk amongst them, thinking of a way to unalive the president. There are several ways that you can do this quest and a lot of them are really fun ways that you might not think of. However, I feel like it is just best to separate his neck from his shoulders with a gun. We find a tower, we wait and evaporate his brain, unlocking Arizona Killer. With this, we're actually only one mission away from the end of the first playthrough though, and I thought it was best to get this finished as soon as possible so that we can end the hardcore achievement and turn it off sooner. So the final battle of Hoover Dam is about to begin, and we decide we want a front row seat. We then talk to Legate Lanius, the leader of the attack, unlock the next achievement, render unto Caesar, and get ready to charge into glorious battle. Now, it is slightly tough, however, with the great companions, a strong legion army, and help from the factions that we have on our side, we cut through them like a knife through irradiated butter, and found ourselves fighting through holes and holes of NCR to get to the leader. Unfortunately, our head kind of got crippled in the process, so that's why when we talk to General Lee, he's all blary. Sorry about that. But with amazing speech, we convince him to surrender the dam and save the rest of his men. He does like the little coward he is, and when we complete the game, we unlock Vendi Vidi VC for choosing Caesar's Legion to end with, and Hardcore for, well, you know what that's for. And honestly, Hardcore really isn't that tricky. It just means you have to eat, sleep, and drink, and it's not really hard, but there we go. So since this is the official end of the game, we now have to reload and complete it again with the other three factions. However, before going into this properly, I decided that I was so close to some achievements that it would be a waste to start them from scratch. So we are going to quickly end this playthrough by getting as many of the miscellaneous achievements that we can so that we don't have to worry about them later. The next Next achievement has us caused 10,000 damage with guns. This was fairly quickly done though, as you'd imagine we've been using pretty much only regular guns for most of the playthrough. So when we went to do more side missions and grind the damage, eventually we unlocked Lead Dealer. Next was the Artful Pocketer for pickpocketing 50 times. This one definitely has you go out of your way and it takes quite a bit of grinding. However, I found a slight cheese with this. In the Vault 21, for some bizarre reason, when you steal from the people inside, their inventory resets, so essentially you can steal the same beer 50 times and the achievement will pop. So we did a little bit of grinding here until I messed up and got caught. Fortunately, this turned into a happy accident as when we shush the witness of theft, we also reached level 20 and for doing so, you guessed it, we unlock up and comer. We was close enough, however, with the pickpocketing though, as a couple more stealing sessions later, we also unlocked Artful Pocketer. Now, there were a couple more achievements that I thought were best tackled now before technically resetting and they all have the same common theme. The next five achievements that we get are all based on the number 10,000. For three of them, we have to deal 10,000 points worth of damage with particular weapons, and for the other two, we have to heal 10,000 health points worth with food and stim packs. So I wanted to make sure I could get as many of these that I could throughout the playthrough as well, so I don't have to worry about them later. The first 10,000 related achievement was for dealing it with energy weapons, and eventually unlocked Blast Mastery whilst taking care of some death claws. The next two were both healing related. 10,000 points healed with stim packs, and the other with food. Now, we had been using stim packs throughout the journey, so we were pretty close already, so we found a good farming spot, took as much damage as we could, and continuously healed, eventually unlocking Stimply Amazing, before dreading what comes next. Now fortunately, I had been slightly big brained, and throughout the gameplay so far, we prioritised survival points, and we hoarded every single bite that we could possibly eat, so we had a hell of a lot of food hoarded up. Same with the stim packs though, we found somewhere to repeatedly take damage, turns out that drowning is as good for this as anything, as when you run out of air, you can just quickly ingest 30 stim and that takes care of oxygen somehow. Now, this achievement did take a while, and we did need to go out several more times to farm for food, but thankfully, we eventually drowned enough for the food to do its job, and we unlocked Desert Survivalist. Christ, but we're not even done yet, folks, as we still have more damage to dish out. However, you know how it goes. The next achievement was for explosive damage, definitely the easiest to do as they do big damage anyway, so we soon unlocked Love the Bomb, before then continuing to go through the entire process with melee weapons for the same result, unlocking New Vegas samurai. Awesome. Now, even though we're still not finished with these challenges, we'll clean up the rest in the next playthrough. During our time maiming everything in sight, we also picklocked our 25th door in the game. Now, a great spot to farm this is the hotel section of the Tops Casino, as there are hundreds of lockpickable doors, so we just stayed there until we got no tumbler fumbler. For the Legend of the Star, we need to collect a lot. Throughout the game, you can find the Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle caps. They can be somewhat of a rare find, however, you can really start to predict where they appear. To complete this mission, 
we need to find 50 in total, hence where the grind comes into it. Throughout the entire game so far, we have been collecting as many as we could, and I would recommend you do the same for your playthroughs. You really don't want to forget about this one or leave it to the end. It will be a nightmare to grind on top of it. To the point where we idly collecting them, we have actually worked our way up to the 50. So we raced the mission start and end to claim our prize. And after earning ourselves a pretty kick-ass unique energy weapon called Pew Pew, as well as the next achievement, the Legend of the Star. We have only got one more achievement left before we carry on with the story endings. Now, earlier we unlocked an achievement for discovering 50 locations in total. The next is for finding 125. Sounds intimidating, but there are more than enough places to discover, and it is so much easier with the Explorer perk. So once we unlocked that, we got the last few that we needed and unlocked Master of the Mojave. The final achievement for now would have us install 20 weapon mods. Definitely took a bit longer than I was expecting, however, for this you can just repeatedly buy the same really cheap mods for the pistol or the katana, as mods can get pretty damn expensive. Again took some farming for weapons and caps to be able to afford them all, however we passed with flying colours and unlocked mod master. It's when I started to walk through the strip again that I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It was Yes Man standing outside of the casino, and he didn't seem to hate me. And that's when we realised that his questline is still doable, I don't need to completely restart to finish the game again. So Yes Man is the next ending that we're going to be getting. Even with this new leader, the missions go pretty much the exact same. We upgrade the Securitrons, power a substation that Yes Man needs access to, and once done, Wildcard is ours. The final mission is once again on us, and this time we need to fight both the NCR and Caesar's Legion. Easily done when you're over leveled like me with some pretty kick ass weapons. In fact, here we also unlock two more achievements. The next was for simply reaching level 30. Another decent grind, but not too bad if you're smart with your perks and your traits. So once done, we unlock the boss. This time we make it to legate Lanius again as an enemy and also convince him with the power of tongue to leave and never come back. Wait, that doesn't sound right at all. Anyway, it's during this chat that we succeed at our 50th speech check and, as you would imagine, once done, also unlock Outstanding Orator. When the NC arrive to take credit, we also talk them into backing down, and this alone is the reason why I love New Vegas so much. There is so, so much content in this game, it is insane. I have played this game through easily 50 times, however, I got an animation that I have never seen before. What the hell? No, get away from you goddamn TV on wheels. Ah, perfection. With that, we complete the game for the second time and also unlock No Gods, No Masters. The next achievement, however, requires a brand new playthrough. For the courier who broke the bank, we need to get ourselves kicked out of every single casino on the strip for simply earning too much. And the best way to do this is with having a luck level of about 9 or 10. I didn't, so I knew that I needed to make a brand new character just for this. So wanting to tackle this sooner rather than later, I decided that now would be the best time. This may sound daunting, but by ignoring everything we were at the tables in New Vegas within an hour, and the rest was easy. With our luck insanely high, we started to earn thousands upon thousands of caps, and one by one we were politely kicked out of every casino. Once we get kicked out of the final one, the courier who broke the bank is ours. From this alone, we had earned over 40,000 caps, so I decided to get another grindy achievement done now, and it's for causing 10,000 damage with unarmed weapons. The options are not great for this, hence why I think it's the hardest damage one to farm in my opinion, but with our well we were able to buy an unarmed weapon called Embrace of the Mantis King, and this gauntlet kicks ass. We bought it and got straight to work in killing everything in sight, and honestly, 20 minutes later we hit 10,000 damage, and it was trivial with this, so eventually we end old time brawler. We are really getting there now though folks, it's finally time to reload an old save, and this time we're going to join the NCR for their ending. Now again, there really isn't much that I need to say, as a lot of the missions are the same that I've already explained, however there is one mission with a massive difference. Now since we've joined the NCR, instead of killing the president, this time we must save his life. We arrive on location ready to be the hero of the day, so we went to the same tower that we were when we killed him, hoping to get a good look out to see where an enemy may attack from. And funnily enough, it's exactly where we are, as a legion member breaks into the tower looking to copy our style. We immediately kill him, the rest of the speech goes fantastic, once Kimball leaves, we unlock, you'll know when it happens. With the end once again here, we accept the final battle under the 
NCR banner and unlock for the Republic. And you've already seen this ending before, so once again, when we fight through Hooverdan and convince the Legion to retreat, we finish the game again, unlocking Eureka. And with that, folks, we only have the ending with Mr. House to go. However, before we get there, we still have some side missions and miscellaneous achievements that I still needed first. So let's get this wrapped up and then side with Mr. House. The first side mission is Talent Pool. In one of the casinos, a manager approaches us asking for help in finding local talent that could grace his stage. And the mission is incredibly easy. We just need to take business cards to certain people scattered across the Mojave. It only takes like 20 minutes and when we return with a full lineup of spectacular talent, we also unlock Talent Pool. In That Lucky Old Son, we need to help the NCR restore a power station that will improve all of the Mojave's electrical problems. All we need to do is fight through an abandoned building and flip on a switch. Dead simple and once done, unlocks us That Lucky Old Son. Return to Sender is actually a mission that I have never done before in this game. And it is an odd one. It starts with an NCR radio operator saying that they are getting some bizarre reports through lately, and we have to check on all of the stations to make sure that everything's working. Everything checks out, however, it seems to show that somebody in the NCR is making false reports for some bizarre reason, and once we find out who, we go to question them. It doesn't end great. He admits that he did it because he was bored and wanted to be a hero of the NCR that gave hope, but it ends with him eating a four-course meal of self-inflicted gunshot wounds. So once he's harakiried, we complete the quest and unlock Return to Sender. The final side mission admittedly is my least favourite, and honestly I was stalling this one pretty hard, even though it's not too difficult. In an abandoned facility, we find a group of ghouls that want to escape the Mojave in rockets and fly to somewhere accepting of their kind. Only problem is that the rockets don't work and they can't even access them due to the night stalkers that are living in the basement. So we hollow out the inhabitants before finding a couple of spare components that the ghouls needed to get into the air. As I said, the mission is not difficult, and it ends with us sending the beautiful ghouls into space. We even use our Giga Brain to steer them closer to their promised lands, so we're lovely and we unlock Come Fly With Me. We only have one more side task now, folks, and it's to simply hack 25 terminals in the game. Now, I've been doing this pretty consistently throughout, so I was dead confused why it took so long to unlock. I guess we just didn't have access to as many terminals as I expected. However, we grinded nonetheless, and finally reached them all. When we find the final terminal and break our way in, we unlock Hack the Mojave. Brilliant! We get our favour with House as soon as we can, and we go to enter the final fight again. Firstly, unlocking the House Always Wins. Once the dam has been won for the fourth time, the TV screen with too much ego arrives, and we complete the game for the last time, unlocking All or Nothing. Folks, we are done, and even though I've been playing New Vegas pretty consistently since its launch back in 2010, I have never had all of the achievements for it. So to be able to completely do all of the base game achievements made me so excited as now we are one step closer to grinding every achievement in every Fallout game. But as you may expect folks, for now, the grind is over. Now, Fallout New Vegas honestly is a total masterpiece. The fact that this game is approaching 15 years old and is easily one of the best games that I have ever played, the amount of content in this game is simply ridiculous. They took everything from Fallout 3 that people loved and just made it completely better. This, for me, easily is in my top five favorite games of all time. And I know that's quite a common opinion. This game is a masterpiece and everybody knows it. However, we're not going to get into the stats until we complete the DLC in the next part. So I expect the DLC vid to be covered hopefully within a month. I'm still grinding them all as I've had a ton of technical problems with the Dead Money DLC, just not wanting to work, but I will get there. For today though, that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Achievement and Fallout grinds. It would mean a hell of a lot. And if you want to catch the Achievement grinds live, head on over to the Twitch. Nothing better than seeing my suffering and rage in real time. So I hope to see you in stream. And of course, thanks again to my amazing Patreon followers. I really, really do appreciate the extra support. Many thanks. But once again, that is it from me today, folks. Thank you all so so much for watching and I hope to see you in the future. Take care everybody, bye bye for now.